Hey everyone. Good evening, everybody. Fourth wall joke. Fourth wall joke, fourth wall joke, fourth wall joke, and uh, a little bit of fourth wall joke, fourth wall joke. Can you really make fourth wall jokes when the entire concept of your show is talking directly to the audience? Eh, fourth wall joke, fourth wall joke, fourth wall joke, and I'm gonna stick my balls in this fourth wall joke. So we just got out of Deadpool 2. <laughs> and before anyone says anything, I already explained it, but just in case you didn't you didn't see our previous video, um, this is not a break in my boycott because this is still technically a 20th century Marvel mo Fox Marvel movie. That is very true. All Disney <laughs> Disney has not completed their assimilation of all our entertainment in the world. So Te technically, I stand by the idea that it even if it was a part of Disney, it is not. Well, the Marvel that at least that you and I know, be uh, with it not being MCU, because then because there that's where all the well, okay for some people they like the interconnectedness, but at least with this on its own, it still felt like a separate entity. It still felt like what. Well, that's actually one of the things that I felt carried through with this one is that it did it did have uh, it still had the unique feel that the original one did and it's still uh, basically this has all the intact parts of uh, what its predecessor had but it's just coming out uh, <laughs> different time and sort of well more accurate time pretty much because actually the first thing that I said about the first Deadpool why isn't this coming out in the summer but and Technically, technically, it's not summer yet, but come on, it's summer movie season at least. Hell, the one of the biggest blockbuster movies, comic book movie, uh, came out at the end of April. So, yeah, you could still co constitute this as uh, well as blockbuster movie season. And actually, this takes advantage of a lot of that blockbuster feel. And well, first off. I think I do honestly feel the same way about this one as I do the first one. It's not better, and it definitely could have been a lot worse. For me, my opinion stays the same. There's a possibility that when we talk through this that it might go down a bit, but that's just because of well, so, not necessarily some bits of sequelitis, but also seeing the same thing that you saw before and not necessarily having the wow factor. Well, some wow factor, but not enough of a surprise factor. What do you think I thought of this movie? I thought you're, th well, sort of, like, on the basis of what I just said, I think you're going to feel the exact same way about this one as you did the first one. You saw it, and you don't ever need to see it again. Period. I guess that's mostly true, it, but it's a little bit more complicated than that. Okay. I will say the first half of this movie is trash. It's it really it's an example of doing something too much and it stops being funny. It's just it just becomes annoying. And on top of that, it just kind of failed to entice me and grab me and get and get me interested. However, the second half of this movie is, well, it's really the Deadpool movie I kind of expected to get in the first one. Okay. It is definitely, I would say that is, is much better. Much better than the first one. As a whole? No, no, oh, no, no. Oh, the second half. Okay. The second half is much better than the first movie. It is, I wouldn't say per, not perfect, but still just about where the kind of craziness I expect from a Deadpool movie. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I could sort of see that. Although, well, like, like I was telling you and we, while we were on our way back and just getting out of this movie, that was a lot of, like, th this movie has a lot of just stuff happening. Like... So it took it sort of took the formula from the first one of well of just basic storytelling. It it harnessed just well you you could disagree with me, but just the idea of just setting everything up, uh, telling us what we need to know, and then and then the spectacle or whatever uh, yeah whatever entertainment ensues with well with us knowing that everything will be all right in the end because this character is not going to be well this character has proved so popular both with the installation pr uh, previous to this and even before that in just general pop culture that 
Well, also, this is sort of a good business uh, magnet as well. So, but it, but it might be a, it might be one for the better because he's, st what, well, what makes, for me, what makes this as refreshing as the first one is just the continuation of it, of its star being its star. Because, what well, I still think Ryan Reynolds, like, harnessed the role incredibly well in this. He's just playing, he's just keeping what worked from the first one. His wit, his charm, but also, what, well, okay, at points... But he, um, in reference to him talking about the first act of this, a lot of it is just like filler. A good amount of like the jokes that they do try, uh, sort of seem just like as qu as quick as like a joke can be. Trying to cover the last, well, trying to cover all the pop culture references that they couldn't, uh, that they couldn't match in the first one. Yeah. That's there. They reference the like uh, other Marvel movies and the DC universe like ten times. And they reference Disney several times. No, you, well, no, they didn't. Or just Frozen. Well, yeah, okay, yes, they referenced, uh, but they didn't. They never directly referenced Disney. I told you in the previous video, they did actually have a joke, like taking a shot at corporate Disney. And they cut, and Fox Fox made them cut that out because they didn't want to muddy the waters. You no, found that out. Yes, that Ryan Reynolds yeah. said this. Ah, oh, okay. That gives me that much more respect for him, though. Knowing that, uh, knowing that he's sort of uh, committed to either the the tone or the image of what. Uh, well, of what it's trying to represent, dead, just Deadpool in general, like he doesn't get literally not giving a fuck. That that's something that he would want to take into uh, account with cre uh, with character integrity. That's what I'm trying to say. I didn't want to interrupt. That's okay. So I mean, that's yeah, that's kind of the thing. It's just it's just too much. The first the first half of this movie is just too much. Too much references. Too much. Uh, fourth wall breaking it's it's the kind of stuff that in the first one i felt was at least paced out a little bit better there were more uh jokes you know in direct reference to other care or like you know just just talking to other characters not everything being you know aimed at it being like an in joke for the audience and and stuff and stuff like that uh but like i said once this movie really gets going it really it really gets going and it is consistently funny after that, uh, so in terms of plots, uh, kind of, for the movie starts in uh, making a reference to Logan. Uh, <laughs> he's got a he's got a music box with uh, the final final scene from Logan of uh, well Logan on a, on uh, you know pe with the log through his chest. Uh, he's got a music box like that. He's playing that. He's turning up all the fumes in his. Uh, it all, he's he's basically gonna blow up his apartment, and he said in his narration he's like, "Fuck Wolverine." <laughs> yep. He he that fucker tries to one up me with the rated R movie, and then he even try. Or wait, no, he copies me with the rated R movie, and then he tries to one up me by dying at the end. Well, I'm not gonna I'm gonna die too. And so it he blows up and it, there's like a middle finger flying through the explosion. And then he goes back to say to explain how he got here. His girlfriend dies. Long story short. Pretty much. And well the, uh you uh you guys might pick up on how nonchalant we sort of explained that yeah, just she dies, she dies. That's sort of how they try and portray it in the beginning of this. Well, they do try and take it serious, but they have they this movie actually does have a bit of balls and tries to kill off one of the biggest motivations of the hero, and which for me doesn't quite work. Oh, it it doesn't because Deadpool's a silly character. You know, if they're going to do if they're going to do something like that, it's not it's for me it doesn't it doesn't quite work cuz you know it's only going to be followed by a bunch by a lot of smothered under a bunch of humor. So to say to say like to to act like this movie was as bold as it was for killing her off, frankly, she the other thing is she's just not that for me just not that engrossing of a character for me to feel that bad about her death. She was I mean, I shouldn't say she was barely in the first one, but I mean, yeah, I was gonna she say spent, she spent the majority of the first one kidnapped. 
Well, no, not necessarily kidnapped. She only got kidnapped once, and the rest of the time she well, she was left by her abandoning boyfriend who who only left her because of his physical uh, physical appearance. But so what you're trying to say is that you felt that the like attempt at emotion or the attempt at a serious tone whenever it came to whenever it came to Wade or Deadpool um, came to like to his humanity. You didn't. Uh, you weren't invested in it because of like the character origins and how somehow you feeling that it wouldn't fit. Really, yeah, yeah. I know that might sound hypocritical, because I've, because I've, I mean, part of the reason why I why I stopped watching Marvel movies altogether is because I think they're too silly to the point of being stupid and nothing ever gets taken seriously. But in the case of Deadpool, it's kind of the opposite. He was a character that was built from the ground up. He was a joke character, quite literally. He was meant to to be as silly as possible, to be a... Uh, and is this from the comic book origin as well? Yes. Okay. Yeah, he was... It's not, it's not like he started off as a serious character and then later became silly. No, he was always silly and and i understand that absolutely mm -hmm. and but i also understand where you're coming from reg uh, regarding the what and yeah you've said it in the past where too silly yada yada can't take it seriously yeah uh but i actually got invested in the seriousness of it okay because what we already were we already were established that we, of his main like persona and even before he became the superhero he still had the per he still kept the personality that was seemingly infectious and which was what everyone fell in love with in the first one or at least the diehard fans fell in love with in the first one was his like personality and character with with finding out that he, that he can actually have a serious side to him and actually that one could argue that a serious side to him was not necessarily exposed but sort of brought to light in the first one when you actually do find out that he has a that he has a care he has a cause he has a reason he has a reason to be serious and to and to be and to be a hero but it, whereas the motivations in the first one were so simple just the slight change of motivation in that it's not necess it's not for something that he's already known but something that he's now just starting to realize or just starting to well again just starting to feel i've i for, for me that's why i fell for it no, I, I, yeah, I fell for it. Okay, all right. Well, I'm just saying. For me, it's not. That's not Deadpool. That's just not what what uh when I when I think of Deadpool, I immediately think of craziness, silliness, all that kind of stuff. What kind of wacky wacky shit is he gonna do? I don't think. I don't. I don't want to learn a lesson about being a hero. And there, there's for, personally, I just think there are much better character, much better characters out there that can do that. Way better than him. He should he should stick to what he does best while other other characters, other heroes so stick he to him. So he should just have a one track mind. That's well, that's sort of the uh, definition of like bland character, which is not as if they if they're just a one again if they're just a one track mind and a one like trait perspective. But it's but what I'm saying is is that they think I'm they think this stuff is more powerful than what it actually is. <sighs> The, the the writers behind it yes that's what they, when they the like i said the opening treats it like a big a holy shit moment when she dies i was surprised and i don't feel a fucking thing i just <sighs> i just don't so uh, uh, um you're picky though yeah. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> and and, in, and I, a, again, in, in in comparison to other comic book movies, where I've said the exact, op I know I've said the exact opposite for other comic book movies, to where you're too silly, you should be taking yourself seriously more, but they're different characters, different contexts, different stories. I can sort of see the different uh, concept. <sighs> I want to say that there's there can be a different layer to the context, especially when you're trying to take into uh, when you're trying to take intact the environment as well as the atmosphere. Since this is such a self recognition, it's well, not necessarily self. Well, it it realizes it's itself constantly. But well, I was almost gonna say self righteous. But really, when I try when I tried to look at it actually, actually as a serious. Uh, Damn it, I don't want to try and harp on it as like a serious movie because this movie is funny. This is, it is, well, for me, Eventually. I thought it was. Eventually, uh, it is funny. Okay. 
based off of the movie's comedy, I still laughed, but I but again, I felt that the ser that I actually did appreciate the nerve it tried it tried to have to be to be serious in the serious moments. And oh, I actually do empathize with uh, with the idea of well, Deadpool not being able to die, and what well, he obviously does find out a way to do it, but for me there were actually like relatable characteristics with that, and and well, so, there was there is a philosophy behind it, but I'm not gonna try and like spell it out because again, in, the interpretational stuff. Okay. But, you know, your basis on the comedy, you felt that nothing. Not one single joke. What? Do you think most of the, like, jo jokes were, like, just references? In the first half, yes. The vast majority of them were just references. <sighs> okay. And that, for me, was annoying. The second half is where jokes actually became funny. Because they weren't directly referencing something else. They were actually setting up funny situations with funny characters and funny payoffs mm -hmm. like it, it it actually it actually started to work okay and i may not have been you in terms of just being the most obnoxious audience member out of everyone in this fucking theater and the interpretation and sitting right next to me seriously this guy Man, your le your leg is like the Jargonauts. You just you just when you you shake the whole fucking theater with the one leg, and at one point I just had to say, Tom, can you please stop? <laughs> Sorry, I can't help it. It's it's literally something that my family has been trying to like fix me for years with. Okay, but that's okay. It's, it's just not, something you had not, to get off your chest. Yeah, it. Yeah, I did. Okay, I always, I always have to complain about the audience members, but this is one of the first. He was time, complaining about me. This is one of the first times I've had to complain directly about you. You're normally pretty good. I will. I'll say that. This, this one, I think you just went a little too far. Well, okay. That all, again, also because I was a. Well, I still felt like a sucker. On a, honestly, it's just being around you, mm -hmm. but like I, I was invested heavily in this. Okay. Like I, 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 I still loved uh, again Reynolds Deadpool as much as I did in the first one. He, for me, he's just such a likable like personality. He's he's basically everybody's boy, but nobody, but nobody like recognizes it because he. Just has the, like, not giving a fuckery of, of like, I don't want to say millennials, but, but he also has the wits, the know-how, and the and the actual physical characteristics to back to back himself up. But he's well, he's also just like a cool, laid-back dude. Which I've heard that the people who have tried to dress up in costumes as him just try and take advantage of. The not giving a fuckery characteristic and just being dicks the whole time might be something that Rick from Rick and Morty fans or just Rick fans might be able to understand. Yeah, but uh, but yeah, it still loved uh, Deadpool in this. He he still got me to laugh so many times. Even well, okay, even in the first half. But it do, it definitely does pick up pick up uh halfway through can i guess uh when the turning point was for you when what well, after one uh one of the moments of me getting hyped but how can you not get hyped when ac when acdc's thunderstruck uh comes on and you're in a skydiving scene it was a, it was even a little bit before that before that okay yeah well, uh, okay, so then, but again, there is a lot that happens in this, and at some points it might, well, okay, it's not hard to follow at all, but some points, like, you have to try and remember a lot of, like, a lot of, like, a 20 second or 30 second scene because so, because so much happens per frame in this, in my opinion, at least. Okay. But, so yeah, then, well, the recruit, let me guess, so then the, the recruiting scene was before that. Yes. And before that, okay. So then the prison break, and do, 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 you're do. too far now. Too far forward. Okay. Yeah. It's a, yeah. You could sort of see my point from that demonstration, mm -hmm. but 
And for uh, at definitely at a certain point, there do actually uh, come jokes that kick in, like well, just the idea of uh, recruiting for superheroes and. <laughs> Again, not caring. They literally just throw in a random person, uh, uh, a random stranger into a group of people who actually have uh, superpowers. But they, th again, they treat it with the tongue in cheek. Uh, at well, luckily they treat it with the tongue in cheek at that moment, at least. Mm -hmm. And what well, the per the moments before that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, do do do. Although. <sighs> For sure, one of the things that was not very good, the taxi driver. Do Pinder, I think. You didn't like him? Well, I thought you wouldn't like him. Honestly, he was, I mean, he's, not, he's certainly not a favorite of mine, but... Non-factor? I, did, I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really think much of him. Okay, he w so he was a non-factor for you. I thought they, well, they did sort of try and introduce him as like a quirky element, uh... In, in that he was, in that he was best friends with a with a lovable psychopath. Admittedly, yes, I kind of did. I, you know, yeah. Now I'm thinking about it. He was better in the first one as just sort of the, the random bystander, <laughs> the unwilling witness. Yeah, the one of my favorite jokes from the first ones when he le accidentally leaves all his guns in the taxi and he's trying his damnedest to call him back and he can't. That's or or even when or or even when he he. It's funny how in this one he says he wants to be a contract killer, and Deadpool discourages him from it. Whereas in the first one, he he's convincing he's convincing him to kidnap. He's convincing him to kidnap it, like a a, a, a suitor it, to the girl that he loves. Yeah, and then he's like he's like I can't believe you did that. He's like I'm very proud of you. <laughs> you should be ashamed of yourself. Kill him. <laughs> yeah, just that crap. So. Uh, we should probably explain what the hell the plot even is. So after his girlfriend dies, uh, well, he, I mean, he's looking for a new purpose in life. Loses all faith. Yeah. So he goes to the X-Men. Uh, I'll say this. There is one. Oh, wait, no, no. Wait, he blows up the place, and uh, then I thought he got picked up by the X-Men. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess you're right. Okay, so he tries to kill himself. He can't do it. Uh, Colossus comes in takes the shattered remains of him and, and uh, puts them back together and brings him to uh, X-Men X Manor. And there is one really good joke in here where he's, he does... Um, he, he mentions about how the place is so empty, where are all the, the X-Men, where are all the stars and everything, and there's a... There's a... There, it just... It pans over uh, his... He, he's he's the legit, behind him, but yeah, the legit the, the legit new cast of the X Men movies is sitting in the other room and just closes the door. Beast just walks up and shuts the door. That's pretty funny. And so then he, he I mean, Colossus really wants wants to make this thing work. He wants him to be. Will it wait to be a hero for a good time's sake? And of course, Deadpool's like, you know what? No, I don't want to. But. Uh, he Again, just, I'm not hero material. He just, he just goes along with it. They meet this kid, this mutant kid who's on a rampage. Firefist is what his name is. Uh, they mention that. It, yep, that's a stupid name. He uh, Deadpool. Deadpool sees a little bit of him in in the kid, so he tries to help him out by shooting his uh, shooting the people that s experiment on him. It's a it's a like a separate mutant prison, I guess, or I mutant, guess, or mutant. Uh, you want to say holding center? I, I guess. I don't know. I'm if surprised. They, they, I'm surprised they hold X Men don't shut this place down like in a heartbeat. But whatever. They. What ends up happening is that after he kills someone else again, uh, Colossus says he has enough and sends him to mutant prison. Real mutant prison, where they've got uh, these collars on them that they can't get off and di diffuse all mutant powers. Meaning that now he has, uh, he's lost his regeneration ability, and he's got, and his cancer's killing him again. After that, Cable shows up. Cable, which, played by Josh Brolin, which holy shit, he is what? Uh, he's like forty something or fifty, but he is still ripped. Jesus Christ. Yep. If you recognize Cable from the comics, most people will. Uh, he comes from the future to terminate 
this kid that was going to kill his family. So, yeah, it's... <laughs> and thus... I don't want to give away more than that. I just... Let's just say... Because that's... Because really, after after Cable shows up and after, like, the the new recruit recruits show up... For, like, Deadpool's team. Yeah, that's when the movie gets good. Gets really good. And I feel like that's... I don't want. I really don't want to spoil the rest of it. Well, and well, sort of bringing uh, light to what is positive about this. It's story based, like eh, story based situations and story based jokes that are what's making it pay off, as opposed to like previous pop culture knowledge and just the idea of re- trying to have references be jokes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the. I mean, it doesn't. Unlike a lot of comedies, it doesn't reek of improv. Even though I know there probably was a fair bit of improv in here, it doesn't. It doesn't feel like a lot of the stuff goes on for way too long, or feels like just people explaining mm. the situation that they're in. No, there are no never-ending. Well, there is one never-ending gag, but it's a good never-ending gag, it's, and it got you. It were. Yeah, it's it's one of those like goes on forever jokes, but it. For once, it actually works. And I, again, again I pertaining to the character, I won't spoil what it is. But yeah, it's just, I really, yeah, I, I really did love the second, the second act. I wish they would have stretched it out into the whole movie. The first, the first half is just, I mean, for me, I was, I almost was just checked out completely. I'm, I'm surprised how, how well it turned itself around before then, but. You know, overall, it's, if you like mm-hmm. the first one, you'll probably like this one. What are the other bits that you thought didn't work in the first half, like, specifically, because... Well, I mean... Uh, uh, I didn't like the kid. I thought you wouldn't like the kid. I didn't like the kid either. He's, okay. I, and I didn't like it. Even by the end, I didn't like him. Neither did I. Because they... Tra- well, they tried giving him, like, two modernized dialogue, thinking that that's what... What, a 14-year-old boy... Oh, okay, that... Then again, 14-year-old boys will literally say anything, but that doesn't mean you have to keep them with one vocabulary ever. He's just not very well written. He's not very funny. He's not very interesting. That that was for me that was the worst part about it. He just wasn't funny. Yeah. I had, that's what I'm saying. That's the, the sole prior should be a sole priority in a Deadpool movie. To j- just be able to be funny. Yeah, you know, when you if you're if you're going to go for emotion, cool but i feel like don't don't weigh weigh in on it too much to the point where you try trying to be more than what you real what you are mm-hmm. because let's be honest we know where it's going to end back up and uh, uh, i sort of thought they had the balls to go with the ending that they did but no what really S- sort of, sort of, sort of. Yeah, I was. It's no. Again, I felt nothing because I knew, from a superficial standpoint, and from knowing the source material, they were not going to do what they what you thought they were going to do. But I thought what I thought the moment that they did try and have was actually fairly mature, and because, like, it, can I just say the one word that. Or concept that it deals with, it just deals with the concept of death. Uh, that kind of gives it away, but all right. No, but well, that's sort of what well, you sort of made an allusion to it earlier on with the like, with the references right away made in the movie. Well, yeah, but uh, but uh, here I'm not gonna give it. I'm not gonna give anything else away. But I thought they when with the, with the material that they had and the pre, and the setups they had to it. What the the emotion that they tried to have, like displayed on screen, I thought was actually not necessarily like moving or, but it was a basic but it was a basic message that that had a better effect than I thought they were going to be going for, because when because the drastic the drastic decision that go, that went involving that situation was so drastic even that it. The only concept of it was just cut, was just cutting away the bad, but not necessarily realizing the good that would lie ahead. That was the, that was what they were trying. For me, that's the like sort of the positivity that they were able to like bring out to uh, to bring out 
even for him, to, even for that kind of character to understand that change and understand and to be able to understand how to how to be able to accept, also accept something, but also have a new perspective and an and a new and yeah and like a new motivation. I liked the serious elements in this. And they bring it all back around into a penis joke. Uh, no, okay, that's not the scene. No, they do. Oh, wait, kind of. Yes, they do. Look, Tom, look, God bless you for trying for trying to, to think this is something greater than what it is. It's a, it's a stupid, silly comic book movie, all right? That's all it was trying to be. That's all it is. And for that, it in in parts and in the, it one half works and the other half doesn't. Gee, I didn't know everything was that set in stone, Mister Man. Mister, <laughs> it's just it for me. Okay, I'm I'm sorry. You 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 <laughs> Thank really you for telling me I'm wrong. You really went. I'm sorry. You you <laughs> you go you go into this like analytical point when when I think even Ryan Reynolds would look at you and go, dude, it was just a penis joke. <laughs> There are penis jokes in this, but I can actually see through the dicks and see a little bit of ray of golden sunshine. <laughs> now, you, I, could, you could try to try to make it work better to a, do a double entendre. Uh, I don't, no, I'm of not going to go that direction. There are a lot of in this movie, but that's okay. Very, a lot of double entendres. Um, so yeah, the references in the well, okay. The references are one thing, but the actual physical situations that they do have, it actually does get a great react. Well, I, okay, the the audience that we had, even though I did fell for some stuff, I didn't fall for a hundred percent of everything that this displayed. The audience, well, if if you could understand my analogy, this one for a second, the audience that we had um, followed one hundred percent of this movie and just ate up everything that it did have. I think I only ate up. 80 to 75 percent of this and you and you, well you said it best you only uh ate up 50 percent i'd say you're closer to a 90 fuck off okay no <laughs> uh, okay <laughs> meet halfway 80 <laughs> well yeah so uh, again again there were there again there were things that did not work there were th uh for me again the kid didn't work the taxi driver was had like one or two funny bits but yeah he he ultimately for me was was nothing uh doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm, I'm actually trying to think about bad other uh bad things in this well okay okay they did try and shove personally i think they did try and shove too much like i don't know if that goes down to the direction well no it does go down to the direction the pacing so yeah i thought they did well they did try and go quick through some bits, but again, I thought when they when they actually did try well when they did set on th when they did sit in one spot and tried to set on things, i.e. the the gr the growing out bottom portion. I st I loved that bit. Uh, <laughs> well, just be well, just because the scenario itself can be like ridiculously hilarious to even just think up. Um, I didn't think that the okay the the never ending gag that you actually laughed at mm -hmm. I well I actually thought that went uh too lo a little bit too long uh but yeah not there aren't that many bad things from this uh, one thing one thing that I would like to try and compare this to for what well, you weren't too big on these movies that I'm gonna mention but I feel this is this is exactly like. A situation of 21 Jump Street versus 22 Jump Street. I've only seen the first one. Uh, you, I think you'd be all right with this with 22. Okay. I think you'd well, like the first Deadpool. You'd you'd be okay with seeing it the first time, but you wouldn't need to ever see it again. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I did really enjoy this. I. But again, I thought this was like a refreshing take. I, I laughed a lot in this, uh, <laughs> more than he would like to know. And I, yes, I know I have an obnoxious laugh. No, it wasn't, I, I it was wasn't. I was literally voted most obnoxious laugh in our senior uh, high, in our senior yearbook. Really? Well, laugh. Your laughing didn't quite get to me. 
it was just well it was that and also the oh, ah, thing you did please don't now. please don't break my seat that's okay you did that all throughout this movie sorry i ruined it man it's okay you didn't ruin it just did I... what did i oh no sorry that was already there what was? <laughs> I thought I thought I I thought I like accidentally cut you with my elbow for a second. <laughs> yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, figure it out later. Okay. You're yeah. a deadly man. Oh, you bad. should be re you should be recruited into the X Force. Okay, that's actually something that uh, that actually is one point for me to complain about. Sometimes the pop well, the pop culture like references do pop up a little too much, and they try and hammer in dubstep. They try and hammer in dubstep. At, well, at least they play one good dubstep song, uh, Bang Rang. They but, play the one dubstep song that I think everyone's heard at least a million times. True. But, uh, oh, God, yeah. They get they get sociopolitical with, uh, with a handful of the references. But the feminist crap. Or, uh, one, be feminist all you want. The one character in here I felt like was almost a parody of, like, the like the strong female characters about how she doesn't really have a superpower other than that she's a woman lucky and everything goes her way <laughs> it is um <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it was intended to be parody oh. but it honestly it honestly works for me as a, as a parody it's like it, it, it's like it's like somebody watched uh, the force awakens and thought you know, this would almost make a really funny. <laughs> this would be. This funny. would make a funny superhero yeah. if it was, if this was just her power, being lucky, being good at everything, regardless of how little sense it makes. Although the irony with that is that there literally is a Marvel character, and I think I've told you this in the past. It was in the, uh, well, it was in the split review. There literally is a Marvel character. Well, her name is Shamrock. She's basically Rogue from X Men. With like a green suit and a shamrock, and her literal power is that she's lucky. Okay. But her luck ran out because she broke her leg while cleaning her house, and okay. and because she because she was Irish too, and since she was Irish, instead of her getting better, she just turned into an alcoholic. Okay. And then just withered away. Okay. Stereotypes the lore, but uh, yeah, I, yeah. Chimichangas? Have you ever had a chimichanga? I have. I honestly don't think I've ever had a chimichanga. Why are why are chimichangas so good? Are they that good? They're okay. Eh. I'd rather just have me some tacos or some badass nachos. Okay. Well, next movie I think we're gonna see is Solo. <sighs> what? Fuck it. Star Wars is going to be around forever. I'm money, gonna... money, 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 money. We might as well get used to one coming out every single year now. No, get used to multiple coming out every single year. Son of a bitch. They, I, I predicted that the moment Disney picked it up. I was like, I wonder if they're going to go the Marvel route and keep, like, ramp up production of these. You know, and when we do do that review, I'm going to make sure not to wear my Star Wars shirt there. I will wear my Star Wars shirt there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see what happens, and... I'll do my best to hold my judgment till I see it, but honestly, nothing about that movie looks appealing to me so far. Fuck it, we'll see what happens. Yeah. I'll see you then.